In this tutorial, we're going to make an augmented beer tap. We're going to use two markers, one for a glass and one for a tap, and have them interact using physics, as you can see in this example here. For it, you'll need the Unity package attached to this lecture. To begin, create a new Unity project, and into that, bring the package that's attached to this lecture, and also the Wikitude package so that your assets folder looks like what I've got here. Now, the main things that we're going to have are a cup model, a cup prefab, which uses that model. There's two markers. One is one I've used before, and there's a new one. Both of these markers are trained into this WTC file, which is called H3D. You will need to take that and put it into your streaming assets Wikitude folder. So just drag and drop that across into the right spot so you'll be able to find it later on. Now we also have a tap and the tap prefab that comes with that. And you'll get all of the different materials. And there's also the uh, Cluda shader and also the shadow shader as well. Okay, and now we're ready to start our project. So first thing we do is we throw in the Wikitude camera, remove the existing camera, and then add in an image tracker. Now that image tracker, we want to set the target collection to the H3D one that I've just given you. Now that's going to allow the trackable to take on the value of either the beer mat or the free beer image. The first one that we're going to work with is the free beer image. We're going to put a tap onto that. So just untick the beer mat so we can work with that. While I'm here and thinking of it, let's just go back to the image tracker as well. For the concurrent targets, we're going to have the tap and one cup. If you want to have two cups, then you want to set that to three. Uh, so if you want to print out that Irish pub marker a couple of times, then you can use that for multiple cups in your scene and you'll need to change the number of targets. Okay, back to the trackable. The trackable is going to display your tap. So first of all, turn on a preview of the tap marker there it is there and now we're going to go back to the assets and we're looking for our tap prefab which is over here not the tap mesh the prefab itself drag and drop that onto the trackable to bring it up and you'll be able to see what it looks like so it's just a basic tap shape and it's positioned like that so in our scene we want it to be so that this is on the back of a wall and then the water flows down. So let's try putting some water spawners in here to get an idea. You'll want the water spawner to be, you know, right there. So what we're going to do now is just create that spawner, which is pretty similar to the spawners we've created before. So let's create an empty game object and let's call that the spawner then we're going to attach it to that same trackable object and move it so that it is positioned where the tap opening is where we want our particles or the spheres that we're creating in this instance to come out of so yeah about there is good and you can adjust that later. Now we need some code in order to make that um, beer or spheres appear in the scene. So right click in the project create C sharp and let's call it spawner and then open that up in your editor. The first thing you'll need at the top here is a exposed variable to bring in your prefab. And let's just call it ball prefab like that. Then we're going to create a spawn method like we did before. You won't need the update, get rid of that. Then underneath the start, add in this. Then 
in the star, we actually want to invoke repeating of that. Invoke repeating for the spawn method and let's start it after two seconds and let's have it run every 0.5 f that'll be the speed of the tap basically how often those spheres get instantiated now they're instantiated in the spawn something that we've done before so we use our prefab that we're passing through we're going to spawn it this time we're spawning it at the position of the spawner object itself so that we can position that spawner object at the opening of the tab and then a zero rotation it doesn't really matter what we use for that then we just make the parent of the sphere back onto the spawner so it's very simple save that let's switch back into unity and attach that to our spawner that's up here so drag and drop that onto the spawner that's on the trackable. Now for that, it's going to need a ball prefab to spawn. In the hierarchy, right click 3D object and then add in a sphere. That sphere is going to go to 000 in your scene, which is where that trackable is currently sitting. You want to resize this sphere. So get it to about the size that you want it to be when it comes out of the tap. So probably something around that. Now the sphere will automatically come with a collider. We want the spheres to come out of the tap and then interact with the cup that we're going to create so that need to have a collider. We also want the spheres to fall by themselves. So we need to bring the physics system into play in this case. So with that sphere, Add a component in the inspector and we want to add in a rigid body onto that sphere and that's going to make it fall. Make sure that use gravity is ticked, which it is by default. So this is your sphere. Now you can change the color as you like later on. Grab that sphere, drag and drop it down into the assets folder and that will create you a prefab of it, which you can then feed into your spawner code. So with the sphere, let's just delete that. Go to the spawner and then you want to drag and drop your sphere up to there like that. Okay, we're at a point now that we can test this. So let's press play and have a look at what we get. So here's my free beer. Let's have a look. Now, what is happening? Okay, it spawned it. You can see clearly in the scene view over here what's going on. These droplets are spawning in the right position at the spawner location, but they're falling under gravity. And gravity happens to be, as it usually does, going downwards like this. Now, why do I have my tap facing like that and not above it where it would then come down? The reason being is that this beer mat marker would then, when it sits flat on the ground, be able to show the tap. But in this case, I've got this beer mat marker sitting on a wall, which is where I want it. So that means we need to sort of change the way that this physics system is working we want the physics to go down the z-axis or in the positive direction along the z-axis now that's quite easily fixed stop playing we're going to go into edit in the main menu project settings and down to physics now if we go over to the inspector have a look at gravity it's set to zero negative 9.81 which is going in the negative direction down the y-axis at the um, acceleration of gravity which is 9.81 and this time instead of going down the y we want to set it to zero in the y and we're going to go along the positive direction of the z by 9.81 all right so we can now play and have a look at the result Okay, so let's get our tap and pull it out. There we go. All 
All right, so the next thing to do that we've got this tap going is to add in our cup. For the cup, we need another trackable. Select your current trackable and Control D it to make a duplicate. Then you just want to delete the spawner and the tap that's under that because we're not going to use it. Select that trackable. Let's call this our cup. Give it a different name. While we're at it, we should also name our other trackable tap. All right, so select your cup. The cup is going to be the other marker, so switch that over. And to the cup, it's going to display the cup prefab. Now you can put that in as a drawable or you could attach it to the cup. We're going to put it in as a drawable this time. So find the cup prefab, which looks like this. And it looks like this because it has a shadow plane and a cluder underneath it. And I'm just dragging that in there. But to see that in action, if we click on the cup and we preview the marker for it in the scene and then drag another copy of that cup prefab onto it, there you can see the cup and how it's sitting. And the fact that the shadow plane and the includer itself is sitting flush with the marker. So if the balls as they're falling down fall over the cup, then they will roll across the marker and then they will fall down and off that marker, which is a nice looking effect. It means that the cup will then look like it is being held above a surface uh, and that the balls are interacting with that. So, okay, we've got that. You can now delete that cup if you've added that in and we are ready to try it out with the cup. So that's how easy it was to add the cup. Now the cup, if you have a look at the cup and go through here for the actual cup object itself, you'll notice in the inspector besides its mesh renderer is that I've also added for you a mesh collider, which means that the cup will be able to physically contain the balls as they fall down into it. Okay, so let's play. And then we're going to need to find our tap. And then we need a marker to pick up our cup. And you'll be able to then align them like that and fill the cup up with those spheres. So that'll just keep going and going until they get full enough, which point they'll eventually spill over the edge and they're starting to bounce out now you can also pick up this cup and tip the contents out like that and because I've got hold of this second cup marker and I set my targets to have three then I can pick up an extra cup if I can get my camera to find it there we go and hold that under there try not to cover up any markers that might be in the road get into the right spot to fill up that cup and yeah tip them out if you move it too fast of course the physics system won't like the fact that you're trying to collide things too much and you'll lose it all now before we can actually say this is kind of ready to deploy we should take care of the spheres. So we're just constantly and forever generating those spheres out of the tap. So at some point, it's going to really bog the system down with an awful lot of spheres. We need to make sure that they go away when they're out of the camera view. In the assets, let's just right click, create C sharp script. This C sharp script, let's call it uh, remove sphere. Then to that, let's open it up. We're going to add in some on invisible code. We'll get rid of the existing ones in there. So this will be a void on became invisible. And inside there, we will run a destroy on this dot game object. That's going to 
be attached to the sphere and when its mesh becomes invisible, goes outside of the viewing volume of the camera, it will get destroyed for us and clean that up. So just save that, flick back into Unity. Now you need to find your sphere, which is here, that one there, and then drag and drop that remove sphere code onto it. And then just make sure it is on there, check it, it is there. And now when the spheres disappear from view, they will also disappear from your hierarchy. So we can press play and just check that out. Again, use our marker, find our tap, go like this. Now these spheres are being childed to our tap prefab, or is it the spawner? It's the spawner. And here you can see in the hierarchy, the spheres being created and then being destroyed when they go outside of the camera. Of course, when you start capturing them in the cup, let's just move that back, grab a cup. You're going to get a lot more of them staying alive for longer and you can see them building up there. Um, but then we can just tip them out. All right, so that is using the two markers to create some kind of physics interaction uh, between them. And I hope you enjoyed putting that together. And I'm sure you can probably think of a whole bunch of other things that you can now do now that you know how to combine markers and physics properties together. Because remember, each of those objects, the tap, the spheres, the cup, they're all in your game scene. So there's no reason that the physics can't interact between them. It's just a matter of getting them lined correctly. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.